Who Owns the Water by Deepa Balsawar Once upon a time on the outskirts of a dusty little village a tiny bird searched for a place to lay her eggs The land was parched and dry and there wasn't a bush or tree in sight The bird discovered a shallow depression in the ground using her claws to remove the stones and loosen up the packed earth She brought in the hole and there underneath the hot sun she laid her eggs The eggs hatched and the good mother protected and fed her baby until they were big enough to fly away This is a tale of the little hole she used as a temporary nest One day a passing wild boar settled his rump into the depression The boar turned and scrabbled in his sleep loosening the earth around his cozy dugout until fading sun and the rumble in his stomach told him it was time to get up With a mighty stretch and a final kick the hungry boar departed his stay bed without a backward glance A pack of wild dogs catching the scent of boar in the wind came to the spot where he had lain They sniffed the circle that was rich with the smell of the animal. They whined and snarled and dug at the smell as if digging the elusive boar himself out of the ground. Finally, realizing there was no dinner to be found there, they departed. In doing so, they left the hole a little bigger and wider than they had found it. Not long after, the rains came it poured and poured and only those of us who have seen the monsoons will know what that means it rained without stopping for 3 days and 3 nights and the dry earth soaked up the moisture like a hungry puppy laps up milk the whole earth smelled wet and fresh and even the normally serious looking people in the village went around with smiles on their faces the hole in the ground collected the water that fell and around its edges the grass grew a brighter green soon buffaloes discovered the grassy spot and as buffaloes are wont to do they wallowed in the puddly water turning the hole into a muddy pit many afternoons the buffaloes gathered and thus with a multitude of hooves trampling the soil the pit that was once a tiny depression widened and grew and became a little watering hole a poor farmer tilled the land near the once small depression his life was hard and the rains were often cruel in summer months he had to travel far to get water for his thirsty crops and even then his harvest was meager one day not long after the last of the season's rains he straightened up from his back breaking work and looked over the land that was soon becoming brown again his eyes came to rest on a patch of green going closer to investigate the farmer fell to the ground with gratitude at the sight of the water bowl Here was water to be had and so close to his holding forgetting all tiredness he raced home and brought out his pickaxe and spade and soon the buffalo's picnic spot was a perfectly decent little pond so happy was the farmer that he told his wife who summoned the village priest to bless their fortune it was quite a crowd that gathered by the side of the pond to see the priest furrow his brow and chant serious somethings that nobody ever understands just then the richest farmer in the village pushed his way to the front of the group he was always upset when things took place that he was not invited to looking at the farmer and the placid pond a slow smile of contentment creased his face 
I see you have come to bless my pond, he said to the priest. Your pond, stuttered the poor farmer. Why yes, your patch surely ends just there. This land is all mine. And saying this, he crossed his arms and planted his feet four square on the ground. As the rich farmer and the poor one looked at each other, the buffaloes, the dogs, the boar, and yes, even the little birds stopped by to see. They all stood around the little jewel of blue, and in every mind, small and big, came a similar thought. Surely, I had something to do with this. We end with the question for you. Who owns the water? Not a moral, just a thought. A germ of an idea to dig and make bigger.